it's not easy. It's like every day, there's always another case coming in. There's always work to do. So while it's hard to see, you have to just deal with it and just keep working and, and, and keep, doing, keep doing what we do. Oh, no. We all helped raise Denta, and she's... A, <sighs> she's, a, she's amazing with all the puppies and all the dogs that she's helped raise. So this, this is a hard one. Fuck. I want to go down and, and see her. <laughs> All right, I got this. So I served my time and I was released and now I'm clean and sober and I have the support of my family and I'm saving money. And I came to Thailand and I just saw dogs everywhere and I started paying attention to some of the organizations and people that helped them. And when I went home, I couldn't stop thinking about it. So I took a six month sabbatical from my job in New Jersey to come to Thailand to volunteer at different animal rescue organizations. And when I came here, I remember I sent Michael a message. I said, do you need any volunteers? He said, absolutely. So I took a train and I took a bus and I remember the day I showed up, Michael picked me up in town and drove me to the shelter and I stayed in a bamboo hut. I lived here for two and a half years and it was great, but I, I had to move out. Because it's kind of hard to sleep at night. It sounds like this all the time. And I woke up at 4.30 a.m. with the staff and I was picking up poop. And a couple weeks later, I'm going on dog rescues and then I'm driving around. And I was just so impressed with what he had created. It was like paradise for me. And I felt he was really making an impact in his community. And it was time for me to go home. He said, uh, Chris, you know you can come back and work. And I couldn't, I felt like I won the lottery. I said, absolutely. I had to go home and tie up some loose ends. I had a dog back home. I had to bring her and, you know what? I'll shut this. We're going in to see uh, Gracie. This is my dog I brought with me from the United States. And we can meet her friends, too. Okay. This right here is my dog, Gracie. And when she was a puppy, some teenagers cut her leg off and threw her in a garbage bin. And the place I volunteered at in New Jersey actually got her from Qatar. And, <laughs> and we've been together ever since. It was actually, they cut, they cut it like below the knee. So then we had it amputated all the way up because they're, they're much more mobile that way. The kids that cut her leg off, I hope and I think that one day they're going to really regret this. They're never going to forget that they did that. And I hope that they regret it. I had to take care of a few things, but I came back about six months later. And that was three years ago. What Michael has created, it started with one dog, and today it's 700 dogs, and all of these dogs come here broken and sick, and he gives them a second chance, and he gives them a reason to live. So let me tell you about the wheelchair mafia. Our gang of 36 paralyzed dogs. 
Every day at 2 p.m., we strap them in their wheelchairs and they have no idea that they're disabled. These dogs come from all over Thailand. They've been hit by cars, hit by motorbikes, abused by people, and none of that matters when they're in their wheelchair. The looks on their faces, the excitement, and they run and they play, and you've never seen anything like it. They could pee, they could poo by themselves. We have to press in the belly. It sounds like a hard work. It's really hard work for them, for stuff working there. And, but... I don't know what to say. But the result, the taking care of them, is really beautiful. You, as you can see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bucking is hard, it's hard. Chrissy, thank you. Living with the dogs, like, all here, 700 is really happy. Mm -hmm. You prefer to live with dogs than humans? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. This might be them. Um, so we have an emergency case on the way. Apparently, two days ago, a puppy was hit by a car and the people are bringing it now because it's been crying and apparently the crying is disturbing the villagers, which is pretty fucking ridiculous if you ask me. This might be them in the truck. We have uh, uh, one or two cases like this every day. We oh, sweetie. They don't know what happened to the dog. You go in and do uh, x-ray yes. and, and, and exam. Right now we don't have any information about this dog at all. We have to assess the emergency case. At internal at Organal bleeding can, can cause the dog to death more than like the bone fracture. So we have to like observe that first. From this x-ray, I cannot, I, can, I don't see the, the bladder, so I might have to check on the ultrasound later on. We don't see any bone fractures and there's quite no, there's no like bleeding inside, so we might have to ask the owner later about the history of this dog. The dog was like very aggressive and we thought it's probably got rabies because it's stray dogs and we don't know the history. There's no way to cure the dog with rabies. I don't do put to sleep or anything like that. We just kept them separately and wet till it dies by itself. Mm -hmm. I'm 49 years old, and when I was 28, I was diagnosed with testicular cancer. So I had chemotherapy, radiation, I had surgery. After the first chemotherapy, they did a scan, and the cancer had actually spread to my lungs. When I was in remission, I was also heavily addicted to Oxycontin, which is a very powerful narcotic painkiller that they usually use for terminal patients or cancer patients. Even though I did not have any pain, I was addicted to the medication and I didn't want to stop taking it. I found a doctor that would prescribe a lot of Oxycontin, much more than I needed. And he was eventually arrested by the DEA. So then my, essentially my drug dealer was arrested. So then I started using heroin and I did that for about a year and a half. I was a very bad heroin addict. Like, I didn't know what to do. Denta is a dog that we rescued a couple years ago as a puppy, and she's had a lot of 
issue. She has a, a heart defect and she's been having some fluid on her lungs. She's actually one of Michael's dogs, one of his 18. And when she was originally diagnosed with her heart condition, they had given her about a year to live and she's exceeded that, but she just stopped breathing at the clinic. We all helped raise Denta and she's, um, she's, am she's amazing with all the puppies and all the dogs that she's helped raise. So this, this is a hard one. Fuck. I want to go down and, and see her. I was sitting in the parking lot of a convenience store and across the street was a bank. And I was looking at the bank and I was like, I'm gonna fucking rob that bank. My father is a retired FBI agent, but I remember when I was a kid, he used to work bank robberies. And I remember he told me two things about bank robbers. He said, you don't need a gun, you only need a note. And number two, bank robbers always get caught because they're usually drug addicts. No. And as sad as, as sad as I feel right now, this, I'm so proud to be a part of this team. And I didn't have a gun, I've never had a gun. I decided I was gonna rob the bank with a note. Um, I ended up robbing seven banks over a two month period. And ultimately I was caught by the FBI and, and arrested and served five years in a correctional federal institution. She had a really good life. It was short, but it, it was good. She had so much love, so much love. It's just sad. It, it never gets easy. It's always sad. Can you ever see yourself leaving this place? Is there anything that would take you away from it? Uh, that's a hard question to answer. I would love to stay here forever. I feel that I'm doing something important and that I'm contributing and doing something that makes my heart happy. And that's what's most important to me. If I wanted money, I would have stayed in the United States and worked there. These dogs are everything. They're the, they're the reason I get up at 3.30 every morning, you know, and, and work 12, 13 hours a day. I couldn't imagine life without him. When I think about it, I'm very much like these dogs, and he did the same thing for me. He gave a, a guy that made some bad choices a second chance, and he gave me a purpose. And I feel like what I do is really important to me, and I've never been happier, and I'm forever grateful.